Today we're going to look at how to set up a project in Premiere Pro and begin editing our interviews. But before we can do that, we need to set up our file structure. It's really important that we stay organized and that we keep our video clips in specific folders so that Premiere Pro knows where to find them. So what we're going to do is on the desktop, just right click New Folder. We'll call this Intro to Digital Media. If you've already done this, you don't need to do it again. Double click into that folder, new folder again, and we'll call this one Fall 2017. Inside of there, we'll create a documentary folder. And inside of there, last name. And then we can create a footage folder Inside of that, we will create separate folders for our B-roll. And then our interviews. Okay, so now we need to actually pull our footage over. So I have a memory card here. I'm going to click into private and then M4 root and then clip. Here I already have my files separated by the type MP4 file and XML document. We don't need those XML documents. We just need the MP4 files. So I'm just going to click here uh, on this first one and then shift and click on the last one. Control C to copy. Uh, Control N to bring up a new window. And I'm going to navigate back to that file structure that I just set up. And this is B-roll, so I'm going to put it into the B-roll folder. I'm actually going to create a new folder here. I'm going to go new and I'm going to say B-roll 1, and then Control v to paste. Now, if you uh, open up your memory card and it looks more like this, where you have an MP4 followed by an XML followed by an MP4 and then another XML, all you need to do is click on this Type button at the top, and that will sort them by the file type. So the reason why we created this B-roll 1 folder instead of um, just throwing all of our footage into this B-roll general folder here is because we have these clips called C0001 through C0015. And if we do another shoot, I have plugged in another memory card here, and our clips you can see have the same names. They're different files, but they have the same names. So if we try to copy these into our same B-roll folder, it's going to tell us that they have the same names, and um, and it's going to ask if we want to replace the files. We definitely don't want to. So I'm going to click skip these files, and then I'm going to go back to our B-roll general folder, and I'm just going to make a new one called B-roll dash two. And then if I paste these files in here, we don't run into the same problem. Okay, so now we have all of our footage in there, and uh, let's open up Premiere. So if we go over to our Windows button over here, find Premiere, and while we're waiting for it to load, let's go ahead and eject that SD card. So this little uh, triangle here, bring up the safely remove hardware and eject media option click on that and let's eject our sdxc and now it's safe to remove the hardware so let's pull that sd card out okay so now premiere has launched and we're going to start a new project and i'll call this documentary and my last name and I'm going to place that by clicking Browse and going into Desktop, drill down into our file structure, and I'm actually going to use Kiana and Emmanuel's project as a demonstration. So I'm going to click into their name folder, and this isn't footage, so I'm just going to drop it straight into their name folder. So select folder, and then click OK. So when Premiere launches, if it doesn't look like this, where you have your project window in the bottom left, and then your source monitor in the top left, program monitor, top right, timeline monitor on the bottom. You might be on a different preset for your view. So if you hit editing, it will take you back to this view. 
So I'm going to pull in some footage. So go to our desktop and find that folder structure. And I'm just going to pull in this whole footage folder into the project window. And this could take a few minutes if you have a lot of footage. Okay, so now all of our footage is in there, and that actually took about five minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and save, and this is something that you should do very often. So you can either go File Save or click Control S. I would do that every few minutes. I like the list view for my project monitor. So when I open up this folder, I can see all the different clips just in a list. If you prefer an icon view, um, what it's going to do is for every folder, when you double click on it, it's going to bring up a new window. And then if you click again, like on your interviews, it'll bring up yet another window. And then if you click and drag on the name of the bin, which is what these folders are called, then you can put it into this uh, window down in the bottom left. Personally, that's a little too... Um, too many windows for me. I prefer to just keep it in this list view so I can see everything in the same window. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these interviews and I'm just going to pick one randomly and when I double click on it it brings up the clip in the source monitor. This source monitor is where we can preview our clip, we can set an in and an out point, we can cut up our clip into smaller segments and then bring them into our timeline. So let's go ahead and just randomly hit I on the keyboard to set an end point where the clip is going to begin and then seek to another spot in the clip. Hit O for out to set the place where our clip is going to end and then click on the video and drag it into our timeline. And that creates a sequence for us. So our sequence is just this timeline down here where we can see all of our different clips that are going to be combined to make our video. So if I make another clip here and drag this in, you can see that we can just line up our clips in our timeline. And if I hit spacebar in our timeline, I, it I'm will Marseille. play the clips that we have in our timeline up in our program monitor. So our program monitor is where we can see all of the work that we've done in our timeline, and our source monitor is where we can see our original files. So I'm going to delete both of those, but I'm going to keep the sequence. When we drag that clip into our timeline, it created a sequence that matches the settings of our video files perfectly. So that's why I'm going to keep that, but I am going to rename it. I'm going to click over here on the name of the sequence, which just took the name of the clip that we initially pulled in. And I'm going to call this uh, SEQ for sequence and then interview prep. And now I'll be able to find that a little bit easier. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and let's look at another interview. Um, and let's just start to pull out any pieces of this interview that we might want to keep. And we'll put them in our interview prep sequence. So up in our source monitor, and this works the same way as it does in our timeline monitor, if we press spacebar, it will play our video clip. Okay. And okay. we can use our arrow keys to seek frame by frame which is sometimes useful if you're looking for a quiet spot in the audio to start your clip. If you hit L on the keyboard, it will play forward. So you inspired at the start if you of hit L again, it we will speed it up. And again, the speed it up more. If you hit J on the keyboard, it'll play in reverse. And then if you hit J multiple times, it will uh, make it play in reverse faster. Again, I sets our endpoint. O sets our out point, and then we can just click and drag into our timeline. So let's find the first answer from this interview that we want to keep. Okay. What gets you inspired at the start of each rehearsal? What gets me inspired at the start of each rehearsal? So we probably want to begin it right as she's talking, or right as she starts to talk after the question. And we want to make sure that Kiana's voice doesn't get in there. So I'm going to hit I after Kiana's done asking the question, and then let's just listen. What gets me inspired at the start of each rehearsal is the people around me. Everyone loves theater, and so it kind of, I don't know, it just, I don't know what the word is, but I don't know, I just get, I get excited and inspired by the people around me. Okay, so there's, um, there's some usable stuff in there. There's also in the middle of it probably some stuff we would want to cut out, but let's just drag that whole clip into our timeline. And then if I hit Z, 
it's going to bring up our magnifying glass, this zoom tool. You can also click on it in our tool panel. And I want to zoom out a little bit so we can see a little bit better. If I hit Alt, then a minus sign is going to show up in the magnifying glass. And when I click, it's going to zoom out. I also want to see my audio waveform a little bit better. We have our audio track down here, and then we have our video track up here. Um, if you use two fingers to scroll down, you can increase the size of that track. So let's find the part that we want to cut. What gets me inspired at the start of each rehearsal is the people around me. So we definitely want to keep that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place a cut right here because I have a feeling that what comes after this we want to get rid of, or at least part of it we want to get rid of. So if I hit C on the keyboard, or if I go over and I click on my razor tool, we can then hover on our playhead and uh, it will snap, the razor tool will snap to that playhead and then I can click and it will make a perfect cut right there. If for some reason this magnet is white instead of blue, then it won't snap. You'll be able to make a cut anywhere in here and it won't uh, necessarily snap to our playhead. So we want to make sure that most of the time there are, there are reasons that you might want to turn that off, but for now let's just keep that magnet blue. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit by hitting Z and just clicking. And then I'm going to hit V to get back to my selection tool. This is what you're going to want most of the time. This allows you to click and drag and grab a clip. Um, and it also you can it also allows you to move your playhead around. Everyone loves theater, and so it kind of I don't know it just I don't know what the word is, but I don't know. I just get I but I don't know. I just get. So I want to get rid of all that, and I want to find where she starts saying, I just get inspired. So I'm going to go here, and I'm just going to arrow until I can hear that at that beginning of the I. And I'm going to go one frame before it, press C again for my razor tool, click on that playhead to make the cut, and then I'm going to hit V to go back to my selection tool. With my selection tool, I can click and drag and select uh, both the video and the audio track for that particular clip that I'm cutting, and then I can just hit backspace to delete it. I'm going to zoom out again, and now we have this gap here, and if you, when you have your selection tool, if you click on either the audio track or the video track and then press backspace, Premiere will get rid of that empty space for you. The idea is just go through your interviews and keep finding all of the usable pieces, anything that you might want to have in your final project. What is the hardest part for you as an actor in the production process? The hardest part for me as an actor in the production process is getting into character during practice time because uh, sometimes you just get more excited at the actual performances and your adrenaline's going, so finding your character and finding those moments can be okay, difficult. Okay, so hit O for out point. I always like to pause it right where I want to go in and out. It just makes it easier to, uh, to make sure you get that precise in and out point. So drag this down. And we'll just keep all of those clips. Um, so go through each of your interviews add them to the timeline. If you do, uh, if you go through somebody else's interview, you might want to leave a gap in your timeline just so you know where one ends and one begins. You could also highlight these clips and then right click in your timeline and say label, go mango, and that's going to change the color of it. So we're going to keep all of Maddie's uh, mango and then we'll say maybe Mr. Brooks will all be um, forest. So uh, that just makes it easier visually to see, you know, if we're looking for a clip later on for our final project, we can say, okay, I, I know I want something from Maddie and, and those are the orange ones. Okay, so a couple other things. Remember, you can, with your selection tool, you can drag a clip in your timeline to make it longer or shorter. And we can also apply all of these same things that we're doing with our interviews to our B-roll. So let's say you're still recording your interviews, but you want to start editing. Um, let's grab one of our B-roll clips and we'll right click on it. Let's say new sequence from clip. This is another way to create a sequence. And it's going to create a sequence with video with settings that perfectly match your video. Uh, and I'm going to rename this to SEQ dash B-roll prep. And we'll just do the same thing we did with our interviews. We'll just start grabbing all of the usable clips. So, um, 
So we'll say, you know, this whole first part of it is something before it gets really shaky. Maybe that's something we want to keep for later. And then we can just drag this down into our timeline. I'm going to get rid of this first one because that's what we just based the sequence off of. Um, and then, you know, our next clip, maybe when we want to just keep, I'm just going to grab a random portion of this. We want to keep from here to here. We'll drag this in. In this way, we can just start to get rid of all the extra junk because, you know, you probably held your shot longer than you needed to, which is great. And there might be some shaky moments. Um, so we can just pull all the parts that we might want to use later on. And then when we're creating our final project, we can just be pulling interview clips from this timeline and B-roll clips from this timeline. And we don't have to wade through all the different clips in this folder. So that's all we're going to look at today. Let me know if you have any questions. We're going to work on this all week in class as we start to create our rough cuts.